Hello, my name is Jared Fortney and I'm a Group Networks Consultant. Today we're going to be discussing the uh, building of P6 data and specifically uh, the user preferences in P6. So we're already logged into a project here and what I'm going to show you is <clears throat> where the user preferences uh, live it's under the edit menu so we go to edit user preferences the first one we're going to discuss is uh, is the time units so we, what you have here is uh, a units format and a durations format and the units per time format and <clears throat> basically what you're adjusting here is how you want to see your units uh, in Primavera so you can see an example of everything that we change here goes to day, example four days, example four hours, four months. Um, if we make decimals here you'd see it's 0.3 months. Um, we're going to work with days. Um, you can also include subunits and then the decimals will come into place again. So you have four days, 1.00 hours, if you move this to hours, it'll be 41 hours. Um, if you move it to a week, zero weeks, 4.10 days. So it does a calculation for you, but it's really uh, the kind of the way that you want to see it in the software. And normally I don't don't uh, work with subunits, and I would make this generally uh, the decimal to a zero. Um, you can also turn the label off. So if you don't want to see it at all, you just want to see four. Um, I normally just work with four days. Uh, you can see the same the same thing here. Uh, if we were to change this to hours, we get 81 hours. So we're going to mimic what we did with with the units. We're going to say uh, days, no subunits, and zero decimal, and we're going to show the label. And we will show you how that works here. So you can now see 10 days, um, uh, 82 days here for duration, and you see zero uh, days here for labor units. If we were to go back and modify that, say we make it weeks now, we have one week, one week, so subunits, four days, one week, one day, we'll close, and you'll see that the units here have changed to by week by day and also the duration original duration by week by day so this will apply to all durations and all units and uh, throughout the software you also see that it worked down here and um, with regard to resources so we'll go back and change that to something that is easy to look at which is normally just days um, and on the bottom here you have units uh, per time format <clears throat> so you can see the units per time as uh, days and hours or you know this t type of format that we just viewed you can see it here or you can see it as a percent complete so when we close this you can see that this remaining units per time has changed to a hundred percent and if we were to go back and make this hours and days you'll see that it changes to one day um, which I believe here would be the uh, the original budgeted uh, time. So the next one we're going to discuss is dates. Once again, in the user preferences, you can see that it'll give you a sample so that you can you can see what will be applied before uh, you actually apply it. You can see here that this is uh, the month day year format, November second. 2012 you change that it's now uh, the day the month and then the year and then your month day um, you can take the four digit year off so that it's just uh, we'll go with the American or Western month day year so now you have November 2nd of 12 um, so this is the four digit year or two digit year you can take the month na uh, name off and just make it 11 instead of November and you can also 
you can choose to not show the time at all. Now, if, if you're in a, in a project where you're scheduling down to the hour uh, or something like that, maybe, you know, something in a nuclear power plant or something that's, of, you know, the schedule's of great importance, then you'll want to show this time. But anything outside of that, you you probably would never use that. So we'll put the four-digit year back in, and let's use a 24-hour clock. So we'll turn the time back on. And another thing that you can do here is change the separator um, symbol. So this is a dash. You can also use a dot, which is what I use, like to use. And you can also use a slash, which regardless, you can see of, uh, you know, that we probably want to take the minutes off. And uh, we actually I don't ever really show time. So we'll go back to the month, day, year, and we'll turn the month name off and we'll do a two digit with the dot separator and this is normally how you know I would operate so we'll click close and now you know you'll see the dates reflect um, that format that we just applied okay so the next one is currency what we'll do with the currency here is we'll just you know you're able to determine whether you want to show the currency symbol or not um, once again it gives you kind of a preview also allows you to turn the decimals off. You can see we have uh, two decimal places behind the actual labor costs. So we can turn those off. <clears throat> and let's change this to Chinese Yuan. And you will see that, you know, currently, let's say for this field, uh, we have $121,000 uh, here for actual labor costs. When we apply this, What we'll do is you'll see that it'll calculate that that's 935,000 uh, yuan. So it'll do the calculation, and you can also see that it got rid of the decimal places. So these are really just uh, ways of making uh, Primavera P6 more comfortable for the way that you'd like to see it. And maybe if you were in, uh, you know, in Europe, maybe you'd be used to the 24-hour clock. Maybe you'd like to see the uh, the day, then the month, and the year. So these are just really uh, format preferences. We'll go and put this back to US dollars. And we will go to email. Now, the email settings here really have to do with, uh, with P6 communicating um, outside of its, of its realm. It's going to, you know, basically go into the go into the mail server that you have set up and it's going to be allow you to send messages to users that are uh, that the admin has set up and associate an email address with so if you had an issue in here that you just created and you wanted to alert one of your teammates you would be able to send that to them and these are the preferences so um, there's two different mail protocols you can utilize. One is Mappy um, and the other one is Internet which is also known as SMTP. <clears throat> but you'll see that the mail server login area here is if you use Mappy you'll have to you'll have to provide a profile name and um, with Internet or the SMTP you won't so um, the fields down here on the mail configuration, you'll see outgoing mail server. This would be the uh, SMTP server that uh, maybe your Outlook server that your uh, IT administrator has set up for the project. So basically, this is where P6 would connect to you know your Outlook server, and you would put the URL address of that server here, and Generally, this user email address um, is typically the project administrator's address. So, what this, uh, I'm not sure about the labeling here, I don't think it's, it's very uh, correct, but you know, what you generally do is put the project manager's address there, and then all the emails coming from the project would be coming from this person's address. Okay, the next section is about wizards. 
um, they've labeled this this section assistance. So what they kind of mean by uh, assistance is this is where um, as a user you can set your preferences for whether or not whether or not you would like to see wizards. Um, wizards guide you through the steps uh, that are necessary to complete a function. So uh, once you feel comfortable adding resources and activities, you may not want to use these any longer. So you'll want to turn them off. And uh, you know you'll see if you, if I hit add here, this wizard will automatically uh, will pop up. But if we go back to user preferences and turn the activity wizard off, the next time I hit add, it'll just add an activity automatically. You can see a new activity here. So. <clears throat> That's basically the assistance tab. Um, the application tab is going to allow you to determine where upon uh, opening P6 that the application will, which screen will open. So you're going to want to make your selection based on the area in which you work uh, most often. So if you're the resource manager for the project and you live in the resources area, you would choose resources. So every time you open P6, it would automatically go there. Um, I generally would go to activities or projects. But once again, it's uh, really wherever you spend mo most of your time. These are checkboxes that allow you to determine whether the issue navigator um, pops up um, upon startup. Uh, once again, the welcome dialog, you can choose whether that pops up or not. <clears throat> this application log file, if you were to turn that on, basically what it would do is create a log file called errors.log. And every time you're logged in to the application, if there are any errors, it'll write you know, to that log what kind of error or it was and you know what it had to do with. This really, to me, could probably go into the uh, administrators section, but so th the grouping and sorting here you'll see is whether you can show the ID code, um, the name slash description, and whether or not you want uh, Primavera to reorganize the the bands automatically. So what it's talking about is, is in your activity view here, you'll see these bands, green, yellow, red. This is um, your group and sort option. So you've set red, green, yellow as your, as your WBS levels because we chose WBS here as our group by. Um, I very rarely would ever go into user preferences and set these. The only thing I would set is reorganize automatically. Um, and what because normally when you're doing a group and, and sort, you would do it at this level. So you can actually set these title and ID code. You'll see that it'll affect the uh, the label on the grouping band. So now it's just the title and the name description. If we turn ID code on, hit apply, you'll see that it puts the ID code in as well. Um, and the you'll see the opposite of uh, reorganizing automatically. If you turn that off, then you come to tools, reorganize now would be uh, your option to do that manually. And what it will do is organize these bands uh, the way that you've set them up here in uh, group and sort. So if you turn this off in user preferences, and, and you go ahead and turn it on for reor reorganize automatically, you'll see that this reorganize now option is grayed out because if you were to make any changes, it would reorganize your bands uh, automatically now. Okay, the next one is is the password, which is pretty straightforward. Click password. This is uh, as a user if your administrator gives you a username and password and you want to change that to something that you know that something that you you know the administrator doesn't know you want to reset your password you would do it here
All right, so resource analysis. So this resource analysis area will allow you to choose the project data to use when you're displaying and summarizing remaining units and costs in your uh, resource usage spreadsheets, resource usage profiles, and tracking layouts. Uh, you can also choose options for displaying and calculating time distributed data in the resource, resource usage spreadsheets, resource usage profiles, um, and tracking layouts in the PM module. So what, what I'll show you here is um, where the, these settings have an effect. You're going to say uh, show on bottom and you're going to go to activity usage profile and basically it has to do with your resources. So when you click on an activity it'll show you your resource usage and that's the resource usage layout this is the resource uh, uses usage spreadsheet and you'll be able to see all the different resources that you're utilizing down here so these user preferences pertain to you know the profile and the spreadsheet The next section we're going to talk about is the calculations. This calculations tab, uh, it'll, it'll allow you to specify how cost and units are allocated when you, uh, when you add or delete multiple resource assignments. And you can also choose the default behavior when uh, replacing a resource or role on an existing activity, uh, on an, an existing activity assignment with different resources or roles. So when you're modifying an existing activity, you'll be able to choose here um, when, when you're modifying assignments whether to preserve the unit's duration and units per time for the existing assignments or if you want to recalculate them. Uh, it has a similar effect down here. So when assigning a resource to an existing activity, uh, activity assignment, you can you can say always use the new resources units, always use the current assignments, or you can have it prompt you to to make a decision. This is for uh, existing activity assignments and also a resource or role share. Um, you'll be able to, to make your, your choice there. Now the startup filters are um, they're going to allow you to choose the data filters you want to run when starting the module. And you can choose to view data uh, for your current projects only um, or all data in the database. And these filters can reduce the time it takes for your projects to open. So basically you're setting the scope of the data that you want to see when you're opening a project. You can, like for instance here for resources, you can say I want to see all of the resources even though I've only um, I'm only looking at, you know, activity codes and cost accounts and the roles and OBS for the current project that I have open. And because if you were to come in here and click all of these, it would take much longer for your project to load um, when you opened it. So that is a general um, overview of the user preferences in P6. Once again, my name is Jared Fortney, and I'm a Greek Networks consultant. I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you.